Hello, welcome to a new video. I'm Kay Steve of Kay Steve Math, and this is going to be the start of a series that I've kind of in, have a title of Middle School Math. Um, in particular, this series will go over the part of math before pre-algebra that focuses on decimals. Now, that's not going to start right away because if you are looking at the screen, you'll see that today's lesson is about exponents, but don't worry, we'll get there. Uh, we'll get to those wonderful, wonderful decimals very soon. So the first thing we might want to know is what is an exponent? Maybe you've heard the word exponent before, or maybe you haven't. So an exponent in math is a way to shorten repeated multiplication, uh, which makes it basically an operation. So you should at this point know about addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. Um, an exponent is a way that we take multiplication and write it shorter. And that only works if it's repeated multiplication. So if you have 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, for instance, you can shorten that by using an exponent. What it looks like is a small number written up and to the right of another number. And we call this, in, in general, we call this a superscript. So if you had like Microsoft Word or some other processing software up, there are, there's a way to type a superscript um, like we would with exponents. So that's a fun word as well, superscript. But it's up and to the right and it tells us how many times basically we're supposed to be repeating our multiplication. So what does this actually look like, repeated multiplication? Well, here on my screen I have an example and I should have said earlier, I have a notes page for this. If you wanna click the thing that hopefully will pop up on the screen and go to my website or link in the description if instead of writing down all of this yourself if you'd like a notes page to follow along with head over there and print off the notes page so that you can follow along real easily so repeated multiplication we have these exponents first off the way we say exponents is we typically say the the base number so this two in each of these is the base number and then we say to the and then the number and then the power so i would say that this is two to the first power and what that means is that we're supposed to multiply two together however many times this exponent says. So in this case, it's kind of weird because we're, re we're multiplying two together one time. So we're not actually multiplying it at all. So two to the first power is just two because we're not actually multiplying it with another two. There's a single two. Whereas two to the second power, we are multiplying two together twice. So two times two is what? Well, 2 times 2 is 4. And you can see we can go on. If I have 2 to the third power, I am multiplying 2 together 3 times. And this can get a little bit frustrating, maybe, if you're having to multiply a lot of things together. But because I have these in order here, I can actually use what I already found. I already know that 2 times 2 is 4, which would be this part of 2 cubed or two to the third power. So then I just need to do four times two again and get eight. And in fact, these powers of two, just each one of these should be the previous one multiplied by another two. So we could write it out two times two times two times two. And we can actually do that multiplication all the way through, or we can use the previous answer to help us. Um, and it depends on how you want to how how you want to do it. What makes the most sense to you as to which which way you'd like to do it. We also have the option of of grouping together our multiplication. So we could do the first two twos together to get four, and the last two twos together to get four, and then multiply those together and get sixteen. Multiplication has this cool property where you can group them in a, in different orders. Part of me is regretting putting all these powers here because now we have to actually figure out what they are. I guess we don't have to, but I guess I'd like to. Two to the fifth, we'd have five twos. We already know that four twos gives us 16. So if I do 16 times two, which I might decide to do out here to the side, 16 times two is 32. And then two to the sixth power would be 32 times two. And if you aren't already a fan of doubling things in your head, I personally think that's really fun. The other thing that's cool about Powers of Twos is there's a, an app or a game that was popular a few years ago now 
uh, called 2048 that is based on powers of twos, that you're sliding the different tiles and each time a two hits a two, it combines into a four and it goes up and you're supposed to get higher and higher powers of two until you get to 2048, which is two to, I'm not sure what power off the top of my head, 10 or 11. Um, but that would be one one way you could uh, practice your powers of twos is by using that game 2048. Two to the seventh would be 64 times two. So that'd be eight and then 128. And then 128 times two. Another cool thing you can do is we could do our multiplication like this and just keep building off of what was before it. This would be six and then five and then two. And we could keep going, right? You can keep multiplying by powers of twos over and over and over again until you get tired of it or run out of paper or whatever it may be. But this is what the idea of an exponent is. It's taking repeated multiplication and notice on two to the eighth, I didn't write out two eight times. That's the whole point of an exponent as making it to where we can write it in a shorter way. Um, and, and also it just, I think eventually it does make it seem easier. If you see that you're supposed to multiply together two eight times, that may seem really intimidating. But if you see two to the eighth, even though you're doing the exact same thing, it, it just looks nicer because it's shorter. Now, so I don't forget, and I already actually um, inserted one of these words in earlier before I'd explained it. We have a couple of special names for powers that come up the most often, and that is the second power and the third power. So for any power, you can, you can just use whatever the number is, right? So two to the first, two to the second, two to the third, and so on. But because the two and three, I almost said the word for it, um, because those come up uh, most often, they actually have special names. So we would, we could say two to the second power is two squared is the word we're, we're looking for. And two to the third power is two cubed. And I am not, a, I don't know, what what is it called? One of those people that like knows about language and where it comes from. I'm not one of those people who, who has done a huge amount of study into where words come from, but I it's my understanding that the reason we say things like two squared and two cubed has to do with this idea that whenever you're finding the area of a square, like this one that I have here, and I've got one, two, three, four, five, and I've got one, two, three, four, five, well together, five and five make a square, whereas five and six do not make a square. So this idea of five squared or two squared, we can represent that uh, visually with a square having that power of two. And in the same way, if you think about what a cube looks like, and if you know yet what volume is, the same idea is there that having three dimensions, having two going as a length and a width and as a height, you would get a cube instead of having a square or instead of having some pyramid or some other kind of thing like that. So that's where those names kind of come from. And those are words that we use. I use it more often probably than the second power or third power. Um, and now you know what they're referring to. So squared is a two and cubed is a three. Let's look at some problems that we might have related to exponents. So here we have an example one. Again, I have a notes page if you want to be able to just print off a picture of this instead of having to try to draw it yourself. So it says build, then write the number with an exponent. And I, <laughs> I just had to pause because I was like, build, I'm confused. I thought I knew what this was, but now I'm confused. So I think this is intended to go with some manipulatives of the idea that you could um, build these figures with manipulatives that you have at your house, but not necessary if we just want to think about how we would write this uh, with an exponent. So for instance, this is, there are four squares here, right? Uh, but how would we write this as an exponent? We would write it as the side links, kind of one, two, one, two, and then with an exponent. So this would be two squared. And we could do the same thing with the second figure. Now, this big uh, set of 10 by 10, that would be 100, right? 
and then we have a kind of a, a 10 length on top and a 10 length on the side and then a 1 up at the top. If you add all those together, what do you, what do you get? 100 plus 10 plus 10 plus 1 would be 121. And what is that uh, at, with an exponent? Well, if we count the sides, uh, a vertical side and a horizontal side, that would be 11 and 11. So we'd write this as 11 squared. Also, I meant to say this earlier that another word that we get from this is it's called perfect squares. So numbers that are um, like 5 times 5 or 6 times 6 or 7 times 7, the answer to those are called perfect squares. Uh, and we like those numbers in math just because they are, are cool, they work out nicely. Um, but 121 would be a perfect square because it's 11 times 11. And 4 would be a perfect square because it's 2 times 2. Uh, can you think of some other perfect squares? And what, what would your favorite perfect square be? My favorite number actually in general is 81. And 81 is a perfect square. And there's probably a connection there. Um, that Part of the reason I like the number 81 is because it's not just a perfect square, but you can also write 81 as um, 3 to the 4th power, which I, I think is cool. So there you go. So this was how we would take kind of a visual representation and then write the correct math to go with it. Example 2, rewrite each number without an exponent. So we might write this out and say, okay, 4 squared is telling us to do 4 times 4. And then we would think in our head, 4 times 4 is 16. We know that because of our multiplication tables. So that would be our answer. And we wouldn't necessarily have to write out the 4 times 4 if we didn't want to. Um, but I would argue for this next one, 5 to the third power, that it would be a good idea to write it out. Because the biggest thing with keeping track here is going to be, or the biggest thing with making sure we're right is keeping track of how many times we're multiplying together. So 5 times 5 is 25. How many more 5s do I need to multiply by? just one more because it was 5 to the third power. So 5 times 5 is 25, and 5 times 2 is 10, with that 2 that we carried, so that would be 125. And again, when it's to the first power, so 12 to the first power, we don't, we don't actually do any multiplication because we're just saying, oh, I just have 12 one time, so my answer is 12. So um, hopefully, Whenever you start spotting that to the one power, you get excited because like, oh, well, that's just the answer. Just you don't need to write the one power. And this brings up an interesting point kind of leading us to later math. Everything has an exponent, even if it's not written. So if you're just doing some math and you're like two plus four, these have exponents of one. We just don't write it because we're lazy and we don't need that information. Um, if we're just adding numbers together. So that's kind of an interesting thing that you could think about, that you could rewrite different numbers with different exponents, um, but because they, they all actually do have an exponent, even if it isn't written there. Now this is going to take a little bit higher level thinking for us, because now we're going to write, try to figure out and write the missing exponent. So 6 to what power equals 36? And really the best way to do this is just to say, I'm going to guess and see if I'm right because we're trying not to use calculators. Um, we're try there is a way to do this with, with more complicated math, but I mean, we're talking years down the road, you'll learn about it. So really it's a question of, is this are these numbers small enough to make it worth my while to go six times six times six times six times six and, and see how long it takes to get to this number 36, which if the person who is writing the problem is nice like I was, it's not going to take very long because when you're using exponents like this, they get uh, these numbers can get big really, really fast. So six times six is thirty-six. That means that the missing exponent here is two. It should be six squared. How about four to what power is sixty-four? And it may be that you're like, okay, well, I know it's not just four times four because that's sixteen. But is it that we just need one more four, or do we need more than one more four? So we'd check and see, okay, what is 16 times 4? That's 64. So how many 4s did it take us to get to 64? It took us 3. So my missing exponent here would be 3. This last one has it written a little bit, quite a bit different way. It's not actually asking us to multiply this all out, which is 
excellent because there are a lot of threes here. If we want to take all of these threes and rewrite them with an exponent, we just need to count and see how many there are. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we would rewrite this as three to the seventh power. The exponent would be seven. Example four, so it says express two to the fourth power at least two ways. I think we can do better than that. I think we can express it more than two ways. But what it's talking about is, is identifying the idea that two to the fourth means other things as well. So we could say that two to the fourth is two times two times two times two. That's an option. But there's actually some other options because we could regroup these in a variety of ways. I could say that this is two squared times two squared. I could say that this is two to the third power times two to the first power. Those are also things that I could rewrite them as. I could also rewrite it as the number it is. Two to the fourth power we actually did earlier uh, and got 16. So that's four different ways actually that we could write it. Now if the exponent is smaller then there are fewer ways in which we can write it. So if it was just a square there's a lot less you can actually do with that. But that's the idea, and this is an idea that comes up later on in math um, as an important thing of being able to kind of group the numbers the way you want to to make it work for what you're doing. So that's what it means whenever uh, we're asked to express it in, in other ways. And here we've got a review of another concept that you should have seen in the past at some point. So what is 4 sevenths of 21? How do I take a fractional part of a whole number? So the idea there is that you have to think of the 21 as though it's in groups of seven so that you can take four of those groups. That's what the fraction four sevenths means. Um, or that's one way of thinking of it, that I have 21 things, right? And 21 is divisible by seven. So I can divide those 21 things into seven groups. And then I can say, well, of those groups, I wanna think about four of them. The other way to, to say that is to say, okay, I'm going to do 21 divided by seven, and then that answer, I'm gonna take and multiply it by four. Those are essentially saying the same sort of thing. Um, that, that's what a fraction means. Fraction means multiply by the top number, divide by the bottom number. So 12 is our answer. Here I've got a word problem. Your family car is at three-fourths of a tank of gas. If the gas tank holds 12 gallons of gas, how much gas is in the tank? So this is something that actually might at some point be helpful for you to know how to do because, you know, we need to know how much gas we have sometimes or how much we need and how much it's going to cost to fill up the rest of the gas tank or things like that. And so to figure this out, we'd say, well, what is three-fourths of 12? So we need to think about if I divide 12 into four groups, how much is in each group? In other words, 12 divided by four is three. So we need to do three times three and we get nine. So we have nine gallons in our gas tank, which means we have room for three more gallons. And so depending on the price of gas or, or what it is we're trying to figure out, we might decide to uh, fill it up with the rest, fill up the rest with gas. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you liked it. I hope you learned something new about exponents or got some questions answered or whatever it might be. I hope you'll check out my website if you haven't already. I've got a, or I, I plan to have an app for practicing exponents. So if that's something that's interesting to you, you can check it out either by just going to kcmath.com or by clicking the link in the description. Thanks and I'll see you in another video soon.